All right, so my uh, favorite graphic novel of the year, which was number one on my comics list this year as well, um, is Jeremy Bastian's Cursed Pirate Girl. Mm. Um, this was something that um, Archaea was going to actually publish a couple of years ago before they restructured. Um, and since then, he kind of um, put this out through like a smaller publisher. Um, it's a black and white comic with very intricate, beautiful artwork um, that follows a um, young girl, kind of like homeless girl who's trying to find her, um, her father, who is a legendary pirate king. Mm. Um, but it's very magical and very kind of dreamlike. Um, the art is the big selling point for me on this, though. He um, he did like just a, a little bit of art in the uh, Mouse Guard anthology a couple years ago, um, and I when I like looked through that, I'm like, whose art is this? This is like amazing. Mm. And it was Jeremy Bastian, who I've I'd heard of because I'd been meaning to check out Curse Pirate Girl. Um, but yeah, this is his um, collected edition of the Chris Pirate Girl comics, and there's gonna be a little sampler in the free Archaea um, free comic book day graphic novel that they're coming out with like later this year too. So people who haven't had a chance to track it down because it's really hard to get your hands on mm. um, can kind of check it out there. There you go. Um, yeah, I I know it wasn't available to order through Barnes and Noble, which is where I usually get my my stuff. I had to actually get it through I think Amazon. They only had a couple left at the time when I ordered it, so it's. It's hard to get your hands on it, but it's really well worth it. The art is just amazing. I can't, I can't rave about it enough. But wow. yeah, it's it's great. It's kind of a kind of a gem that came out this year that I think is under a lot of people's radar. But if you've seen his artwork, you, I think you'd really really enjoy it. Well, it's under my radar because I hadn't <laughs> read it, um, and I've probably heard you mention it, but I didn't uh, really. Um, it's something I'm not really familiar with, so I'm looking forward to checking it out. Yeah, and I, I really don't have a, like last year, um, The Littlest Pirate King was my favorite coming mm. of the year. Now it's another pirate one this year, but I'm not, I'm not that huge into pirates, I swear, but <laughs> well, <laughs> it's this... just been really solid books for pirates. So is Cursed Pirate Girl kind of like a, aimed at like young readers kind of thing? Well, it's, you know, it, it, it's definitely like an all ages feel to it. Yeah, it sounds like but it. But it's like, um... I don't know, his art style is very, like, alternative comics-based, oh, I feel cool. like. Um, yeah, and it's just very magical, well, but, you know, I... she's kind of like a, kind of a, like a rough character a little mm -hmm. bit, you know what I mean? And Sounds good. Yeah, well, I, I think cool. a lot of times, like, um, comic book fans have kind of an odd kind of view, too, to art styles. I mean, I think sometimes what we think of as, like, more edgy, like, alternative art styles when you're, you're looking at comics is actually stuff that kids respond to yeah just fine you know there's nothing you know a bone is an alternative comic book but uh, to an average kid it's much more normal looking than yeah a lot of what marvel and dc publishes so. yeah and like i said before jeremy vasting too it's it's really his art that's the selling point on this i mean mm. the story is great the character is great but it's like there's very few graphic novels where you just like have to stop and admire a page like he mm -hmm. structures those pages really well um, a lot of them have like really elaborate like ribbons through it and stuff like that that are just beautiful to just like stop and stare and look at the page. So, you know, every page of this is a treat. I loved it. Wow, sounds fantastic. Yeah. I can't wait to read it. All right. All right. Well, I don't think you'll be as enthusiastic about <laughs> my choice. Well, do you want to okay. do? No, I should do my yeah, choice for this, these. and then you can name um, writer. Um, my choice for best new graphic novel. This one was also a tough choice. It was kind of between two for me, and they were okay. two that are so drastically different that there was really no way to <clears throat> compare them, I felt, objectively <laughs> against each other. So, I did what I always do with these lists. I just went with my heart. What did I flat out enjoy the most, front, front page to last, uh, when I sat down to read it? My favorite graphic novel of the year brace yourself, is, I love this book, Prison Pit, book three by Johnny oh Ryan. God. Dave doesn't like Prison Pit, and he, you know, I'll give you I a get the appeal. To talk. Yeah, um, well, for me, the appeal of Prison Pit is huge. So, um, for people who don't know, Prison Pit is created by Johnny Ryan, who for most of his career um, has been primarily a humor cartoonist. He did angry youth comics, uh, for a long time through Fantagraphics and the Blecky Yuccarella alternative comic strip. Really crass, non-PC, um, you know, I, some people would say crudely drawn humor strips. Um, but a few years ago, he released a book called Prison Pit Book One. And this was something completely different for Johnny Ryan. 
it is uh, very much inspired by the work of artists like Jack Kirby, but also a lot of uh, manga influence. Mm -hmm. um, and it's essentially just a, a fight comic, almost a kind of horror action comic uh, about um, this these you know ugly, tough characters on this other world. And the main character, this will give you an idea what kind of a book this is. His name is Cannibal Fuckface. And he is dropped into the prison pit. Uh, and all that happens in the prison pit is you've got these big guys with different powers just fighting each other for page after page after page. Um, now, in in the, the third volume, which is the one that's on my list for this year, it's, it releases about one a year, um, it, the story actually expands a bit. Uh, they introduce a new character at the very beginning. Uh, the protagonist from the first couple books kind of is not in it until a little bit later on in Volume 3. Uh, and it ends on a, a, an intriguing cliffhanger that expands the premise of Prison Pit and suggests that uh, the story that Johnny Ryan is telling here may be just a bit more complex and interesting than it at first appeared. However, the main appeal of this book really is just the sheer cartooning craft and exuberance Johnny Ryan brings to this material and these fight sequences. Um, and for people who aren't kind of tuned into this kind of story and this kind of storytelling, it's, it's hard to explain. But there's something really pure about Prison Pit. Um, and comics like it that are stripped of any kind of literary pretension. Um, it is not a parody of fight comics. It is not an ironic take on fight comics and genre material. It is Johnny Ryan putting all of his cartooning muscle behind crafting some really spectacular sequences. It's the black and white books, really violent, uh, just over the top violent, a lot of body horror and, and bizarre transformations that these characters' bodies go through in the course of fighting each other and killing each other and maiming each other in horrible ways. Um, it, it's just the lowest form of genre material, uh, but because of that, you, you're really able to focus on the craft that, that Johnny Ryan is bringing to bear here. And for me, it is one of the most pure and wonderful comics reading experiences to be had right now. I wish these volumes came out every month. They're fairly slim volumes. But uh, when I got done reading Prison Pit Volume 3, I, I, I was like alone in, in my apartment reading Prison Pit. And <laughs> a little image for you. And, and I just, I, I literally said out loud, like, awesome. It was just an awesome experience. It was like... Um, I described Prison Pit to, to a friend of mine because uh, he saw the cover. He's like, oh, this looks cool. <laughs> and I'm like, it's kind of like if like death metal could, like the concept of death metal like was a comic book. It's just so over the top, in your face, amazing, amazing work. Um, and I've had Prison Pit on best of year lists in the past. And I think at one time I called it uh, one of the most intelligent comics out there right now. And I, I actually stand by that. I, I still believe that. Um, I think Johnny Ryan really knows what he's doing. I think he's impressed a lot of people with his work on this series, and he continues to impress me. So um, without reservation, Prison Pit Volume 3, or Book 3, was my favorite original graphic novel this year. Okay. <laughs> it's a valid choice. Um, I've, I've liked things that Johnny Ryan has done in the past, um, just recently, nothing's really, I don't know, connected with me, I guess. You just I've, turned off by the whole prison pit Yeah, I style. tried reading it, I was just kind of bored by it, the over-the-top stuff just didn't do anything for me. Hmm. I feel like <laughs> if, if what you were, well, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, you know, the, the, this kind of a comic book is certainly not going to be for everyone, mm -hmm. but I feel like if you're not necessarily turned off by that kind of material I mean, if you're at all interested in the mechanics of comics um there you'll get something out of this book mm -hmm. um yeah i don't know but i you know that's like i said this like more than anything i think that this best of list uh it doesn't really represent the year in comics but it re represents my year as a reader of comics and i definitely i i do find that i'm responding more to uh, for whatever reason, comics that do sort of cast aside the kind of larger literary 
ambitions of artists like Chris Ware or Art Spiegelman. I love those artists as well. Mm -hmm. um, but comics that are a little bit more down and dirty, a little bit more gritty, uh, kind of going for the kind of low culture aesthetics of uh, that comics were really born of. Something about that that really uh, excites me. Those comics seem somehow more vital and alive right now. Um, but that's that's that you know that's me talking. I'm not necessarily making the case for those comics as being better than more literary comics. But this year, for whatever reason, they were the comics that excited me the most. And Prison Pit Book Three was the best of them. All right. 